The basis is off of a lot of research that's been done about kids spending time indoors, the negative effects that it's been having. Um, and the book, Last Child of the Woods, was kind of where this initiative started. It was um, kind of brought to Chicago Wilderness's attention. It brought to the forefront of everyone's minds how childhood has changed so much in the past few decades and how kids are no longer going outside and playing when they're young and they're pretty much, it's the earphones all day long and the phones and then they come home and plop in front of the TV and they don't really have a sense of time of day so there's no set dinner times and they just kind of snack throughout the day and all of these kind of culminate in ch the prevalent childhood obesity problem that we have and Ch um, Chicago Wilderness has come up with a lot of different ways to encourage kids to be outside and encourage parents specifically to just have their kids doing unstructured play activities in natural areas that are not necessarily tame. Uh, this is one of the quotes from the book that kind of shows how kids' mentality towards playtime has changed over the years. Um, he likes to play indoors because that's where the electrical outlets are because that's pretty much the, their connection with either relaxation or detaching and de-stressing from everyday life and when you play outside it's kind of the opposite instead of detaching from everything you're you're reconnecting so they've done a lot of studies um that are very uh late in the pit. okay so university of illinois researchers started looking uh, the 1980s on and there's been a 1% per capita decrease in records of visitations to public land. So this means camping is decreasing, hiking is decreasing, people just aren't visiting the natural areas like they used to and this has been going down 1% ever since the 1980s every year. Um, and all of their, this, this evidence is pointing to an ongoing and fundamental shift away from nature-based recreation that is not centered around tame areas like playgrounds and um, like paved trails, things like that, instead of the kind of unexplored, unstructured natural areas like a forest or a woodland or a marsh even. Um, so the University of Maryland is one that did a study in 97 and then they repeated it in 03 and they had 6 to 12 year olds use time diaries to kind of see where they were spending their time and there was a 16% drop in participation in sports and out other outdoor activities and it's been shown that they're spending about 30 minutes per week outside and 6 hours per day in front of a screen, in front of a computer screen or a TV screen. And this is, again, it's being a problem in that it leads to childhood obesity, it leads to the ADD that we're seeing that's so prominent now, um, and those kinds of problems. So Chicago Wilderness has kind of jumped on this and started the Leave No Child Inside initiative, and they really want to give people the tools to help get their kids outside and kind of giving them an idea and guidelines about how to go about it because there's a lot of fears people have in just letting their kids go play outside. Um, so Chicago Wilderness is a, is a group of 240 organizations and Leave No Child Outside was started in 07 by this initiative to, to try and get more kids outside. Um, and like I would say, the, the research tells us that it does help with ADD and kids show a significant increase in their motor skills and in their cognitive skills by being in these unstructured uh, settings and being able to just play. Um, so they did another study in one. And this was uh, through Urbana Champaign, the Illinois researchers over there. And they, they looked at Midwestern families with 7 to 12 year olds with ADD specifically. And 
they did surveys with them and in-depth interviews, and it showed that contact with nature is systematically lessened the ADD symptoms that the kids were showing. And that they also did another study in 2005 with 6 to 12 year olds involving them in this um, 12 day summer camp. And it showed that there was a significant increase in self esteem and positive um, self descriptions. Um, I, I feel like he's, he's very repetitive. Uh, what I want to talk about is uh, the AMA publication, Archives of Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine. Their conclusions was that unstructured outdoor play has the potential to improve all aspects of children's well-being, physical, emotional, social, and cognitive. So pretty much everything uh, kind of works together in a more holistic way when they're having this unstructured playtime outside. Um, they've also done studies with environmental activists and kind of trying to figure out what makes someone environmentally sensitive. And they through interviews and surveys and things like that have shown that the two major factors in making someone environmentally sensitive are time outside as a young child and then a positive role model that is also taking you outside. So someone that is taking you fishing or taking you hiking and teaching you things outside. And also, so there's two main reasons why we need to have kids participating in things like this. The first is their health and their mental wellness, I guess. They're to lessen the ADD, lessen the childhood obesity. And the other one is who is going to take care of the planet? How are we treating our next generation of environmental stewards and natural stewards? Because if they don't care about something, they're not going to want to take care of it. So it's getting them to be interested in science and in nature and be interested in protecting things that are outside. And um, the way we go about this okay, is we have to overcome a few different things. There's a lack of access to green areas, and then there's a fear of strangers of traffic, um, things like that. And then just fitting it in between, you know, soccer and piano and everything else kids are doing and Girl Scout stuff. So how do we fit everything in? Um, the goal is to just model simple activities for your kids outside. Don't make it too complicated. Don't make it too hard on yourself. So a lot of times if you just give kids the opportunity to develop their own curiosity and kind of go where they want to take it. You don't have to worry so much about how am I going to guide you know, the learning that's, that's occurring because it's very much you can start in your own backyard and kind of get them interested there. So there's an activity book I have if anyone wants a copy and it kind of shows you simple ways to just start in your own backyard catching bugs, identifying them, looking at birds, how do I get my kids into birding and um, it's very much a learning process that can take place with both of you kind of sharing and enjoying it together. Uh, it doesn't have to be overstructured. You do not need an expert to start um, un with unstructured play because that's kind of the whole point is that it's unstructured. You're kind of going where they take you, where their curiosity is leading them. So if they're interested in bugs, you know, try to, oh, well, can we identify this and we'll pick up on that. You can make bug trappers. You can have a little wetland in your backyard that you can watch and take care of. You can catch butterflies and try and identify them. And it's also, the reason it's so good for their, their motor skills and their cognition is because you're involving all the senses. A playground is mostly for physical, um, strength and kind of coordination, it's not involving touch, it's not involving smell, it does not involve a lot of your senses that help kind of balance your body as a whole. So when you're playing outdoors, you know, things feel different. You've got dirt, you've got water, trees, bark, leaves, everything you touch is different, everything you smell is different. And you can use those things to play on just like you would a playground, except for it's much more detailed and in-depth and a, a broader learning that's taking place. So I have uh, 
the legal child side booklets and all the pamphlets that were put together by Chicago Wilderness, if you guys want a copy. And I also have copies of their activities guide for you know, who is interested in kind of the simple ways you can model this kind of unstructured play for your kids. And it doesn't take a lot of time or effort. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. It's kind of a brief overview of their initiative and how it works and their 